All right, everybody. I hope everybody's doing well. Uh, we're a few minutes late. My apologies. Uh, I've got a new light in the studio. Uh, I'm really excited about that. Uh, the softbox came in tonight. And so I also have a new camera, uh, but I need a couple of accoutrements to get it to work. So uh, that's coming up. Oh my goodness, it's tight in here trying to get around the softbox, don't you know? Alright, so if you're unfamiliar with this, a random quick draw is an illustration activity. There are four categories and 12 options in each category, so uh, that gives you over 20,000 options uh, for things to draw. Uh, but uh, the four categories are character, action, object, and setting. And tonight, uh, if you followed me on Twitter, you got the announcement uh, tonight. I rolled, I rolled four dice, basically, four 12-sided dice. Uh, and tonight we'll be drawing a mad scientist tumbling down. Uh, the object is a vase of flowers, and the setting is a farmer's market. So um, this should be, should be interesting. Our last, uh, last week's session also had a vase of flowers. Uh, and last year, uh, the mad scientist uh, was one... I think we might have done a mad scientist more than once. I'm not 100% sure. But, yep, the mad scientist has returned as well as the vase of flowers. Uh, i got to take the, the hat and flip it around here. Uh, my bill is hitting the camera and making it shake. <laughs> All right. And I don't have my phone nearby, so getting any photo reference will be a little bit challenging. But let's see. Normally I start with the character, but tonight maybe I'm thinking of these kind of wooden crates stacked up as something that he could fall down. So, um, I don't know. Why is a mad scientist at a farmer's market in the first place? I thought, well, if he's got a vase of flowers, are those flowers something that he needs to be able to make some kind of chemical reaction? And I can't think of anything about flowers that that would make them highly coveted or maybe there's a rare flower i i don't know um, i'm not much of a chemist and <laughs> but that's kind of where my mind was going is how can i create this mad scientist and the need to tumble down idea why he's at a farmer's market. I like there to be some reason why uh, other than just drawing it even though it is random I like to make some kind of connection between these things even though it seems like there's impossible for a connection to be between a mad scientist tumbling down with a vase of flowers at a farmer's market. Um, I feel like I'm so out of practice drawing. Like I just haven't been uh, for so long. I've I've just been teaching art, which <clears throat> there's a little bit of drawing involved in that, but it, it's more just showing techniques and skills. It's not really pushing yourself creatively a lot, um, other than creative ways to teach uh, things. So I feel like this gives me an opportunity to. Um, really try and challenge myself a little bit and uh, I think of mad scientists as being angry because they're mad right but maybe mad means crazy but still <laughs> he's dilated maybe yes he looks his vase of flowers, he's tumbling. Let's see. I 
think of a mad scientist as having wild hair. Like from Back to the Future. Or... I don't know. It's like Doogie Hauser here. <laughs> Freak freaking out. But Doogie had curlier hair. I mean, he wasn't really a mad scientist, he was just a genius, but. I sort of think of him for some reason. Neil Patrick Harris. I don't know. Why do I need my mad scientist to have high cheekbones? Ah. Just one of those things. Looks like he's freaking out a little bit. Let's make this eye a little bit bigger. A little more bulbous. A little bit of worried, even with the mad look. I need a little bit of worry in the eyes, like shock and all. All right. Let's get a good shoulder turn in there because nothing says you're tumbling more than a good shoulder turn. But I need one hand to be reaching out, kind of grasping for it as it's falling. So maybe he's kind of... Maybe at a farmer's market... You know, I think about it, at a farmer's market, they want things like the world's largest pumpkin or something like that. Um, but I've already kind of started drawing him. I can't do the world's largest vase of flowers. Um, thinking lab coat here. Okay. Chest. No idea how this filler got this contorted. <laughs> oh. oh dear. Yeah, there are points in drawings where you just aren't sure you're gonna <laughs> gonna like what you draw. <laughs> that looks really jacked up. <laughs> Uh, <clears throat> I don't think I want his leg to go that way. <clears throat> he cannot have his feet underneath him. That's the problem. Like I can't draw his foot that way. It just doesn't. He's tumbling. It's got to look like he really is bombing out. Like, it can't look like he could recover. I don't even know what mad scientists wear. I don't know why I'm putting them in loafers or whatever heel dress shoes. Maybe a mad scientist would probably be wearing probably be wearing chucks, man. Yes. It's got to be a little eccentric, right? He can't just be run of the mill. So maybe 
maybe that striped socks. Maybe that makes them look a little bit more. And maybe we got some Chuck Taylors on here. I think there's got to be a chicken that's flying here. Like, let me out of here. Who is this crazy scientist getting in the farmer's market?
Right. There's some boxes falling. Let's do some corn, ears of corn popping out. Nothing says farmer's market better than chickens and corn, right? Sure. And tomatoes. Starting to come together, right? Donkey Kong dying sound. I don't know if that was a Donkey Kong dying sound or not.
Yeah, maybe we need some little exotic leaves. Run out of here. Do a little back of a flower here. Alright, we're getting close. We're getting close. It's not too bad. Is there anything else that a mad scientist would have that would really let you know he's a mad scientist? I'm trying to think. We have a tie. Stethoscope, what kind of shirt would he wear? I don't Goodness, that was an errant mark. <clears throat> what else can we do here? When we get to inking, is there anything else that needs to happen? I wonder. Big bushy eyebrows? Maybe. the sense these flowers were really important. Yeah, let's get some whites above his eyes. That really makes him feel like a shocker. scientists this one anyway has an Adam's apple I there needs to be something over here. I had a picture of an old pickup truck in my mind a while ago. I don't know if I can make this guy off enough in the distance. Uh, I don't know if I like that or not. I don't think I like that. Maybe I'm okay with it being blank over here. I don't know. Could he be like getting ready to crush into something? I'm not sure. <clears throat> I think I like it the way it is, honestly. I'm gonna go ahead and start. Let me grab my brush pen, my trusty brush pen. Yeah. Let's 
see what we got here. I was sharing last week about how I can't wait to like get the hang of this pin. And I'm excited. One of the reasons uh, that I love doing the illustration uh, this way is it gives me the opportunity to really work on this pen. And again, I've seen many people, many artists I should say, professional artists who can really work with this pen and get some very beautiful line weights and uh, details and they know just how to get what they want. But then there's another thing about it is they're really loose and they're okay with things not being perfect. And I think that's part of part of becoming skilled at this is learning what is okay to let go of as far as control. Like where that line is where you're gonna maybe not get exactly what you want but you're working quick enough and free enough that the character and the personality still comes through and the accidents don't matter like I would have loved for that to have been a light line weight because it was just the, the line of his face but he got a little bit heavy with it and it really changed the look. It makes them look a lot more older, I guess, or just, it just feels clunky more than anything. And I look forward to feeling really comfortable knowing when that clunkiness is gonna happen and being able to avoid it. try to use one of these and go really slow and be extremely intentional but I find that that does not work well at all at least not for me and from when I watch professionals use this pen they are really quick about their business they're not trying to sit and wait or linger on much of anything it just seems like they are gonna go after it and and I think that that's honestly, if I can get enough time with this and feel comfortable enough with it, I, I think that's a big part of being successful with it. So like I know I want that to taper right there, but I don't, if you pull into an area, it doesn't, or if you push out of an area, it doesn't taper very well. Hmm. And ironically, I haven't looked up any videos on how to use a brush pen. I bet they're out there. Also, I'm a lefty, and I realized that on camera, it's better if I pull over a little bit for you to be able to see better. I looked at the last week's video and realized that if my hand is left of center, 
you can see a lot easier or if I can prop my hand down on the lower part of the page but that really constricts my motion more than I like it to be constricted not saying I won't work that way because it helps to be able to see what's going on but like this is how I would normally work and it's kind of covering up all the stuff I've already drawn which is not great for viewing <laughs> I'm excited though I mean this to me is a kind of a journey and an exploration to see if this would even be a worthwhile pursuit and I know from a practice standpoint it's worthwhile it's always worthwhile to practice but I mean from just a putting something out there does it have any benefit for people do they enjoy uh, watching do they learn anything or does it provide any kind of value for them whatsoever <laughs> and I don't know why when I came up with this idea I thought man this is gonna be so cool because you're just drawing these random things it's not like it's a new idea this is something that's done all the time in the art industry and illustration um, but I'm not big like I don't know all of the different characters like I sometimes I'll go to draw with friends and you know, and they're like, ooh, I'm going to draw this. And I'm like, who's that? Oh, you don't know what that's from? And I'm like, no, I don't know what that's from. Uh, and I always feel kind of like I should know, maybe. I don't know. But I just don't. I'm not, I'm not up on all of the different um, characters that are out there that you can draw. I have this weird thing too uh, about Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. <laughs> like, I have seen some artists do a beautiful, incredible work, uh, and I have seen a lot of different versions of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and I just still have not found an artist that has gotten it to a degree that, for some reason, I have in my mind that they're teenagers, and so they should be a little bit not fully developed, not like big and strong and muscular to the extent that they are in a lot of the movies and even a lot of the, uh, just the cartoon. Uh, and so I have this thing, like I know there's a style that I would just resonate with if somebody could produce it. I've tried to produce it myself and I haven't been successful yet. Um, but I just, I get the sense there is a, there is a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle style that is yet to be drawn that is spot on with the fact that they're teenagers and they're mutant turtles. And, uh, I don't know. And that's not to say that there's not excellent artwork already out there. There's a ton of great versions of it. Um, I just, I don't know why I'm always left kind of being like, but that's not teenagery enough or that's not cool enough or that's I don't know it's just my own weird hang up <laughs> in the art scene and maybe one day I'll develop my skill enough to be able to capture what I'm talking about that might be the best way to go about it instead of keep dreaming that it happens <laughs> I got a lot clunkier than I wanted it to. It's just like, if I forget for a second the tool, I feel like I'm, it, or if it's on an angle, maybe I guess is the best way to say it. If it's on an angle that's not comfortable with my, the grip of my hand or the natural motion of my arm, it's almost like I can guarantee it's going to be big and clunky, cumbersome, and kind of unappealing. And that's what I really am trying to figure out. Like, how do I kind of curb it?
what might be fun is to do one of these on Zoom so that people could draw along and we could all draw together. If that would be something that interests you, it might be cool. Comment in the comment section below. I could always send out a Zoom link. I don't know if you can stream a Zoom link. But you can record it. That might be kind of cool, but Zoom also doesn't have like exceptional recording quality, so I don't know if it would look good or fuzzy and mm, I don't know, it might not be quite as interesting. I don't know. I'm open to options though, see what is fun for folks. Plus it would be cool to meet some artists who are kind of just doing their thing and draw together. I think this is the beauty of this brush. It's like you can get these nice thick shadowed uh, bottom areas and then get really light. And then, like especially on a tomato, the way that the little uh, bits taper as they come out, you can really accomplish that with a brush pen very nicely. And you can also mess it up really great. So, there you go. How you get that light, really light line, <laughs> kind of wreck it with a clunker. <laughs> no more clunkers. Look at all them clunkers, man. Ah, these lines are so clunky. All right, this old feller is definitely taking the tumble. Chicken friend here. I want to give him duck feet. I almost gave him duck feet there. You got to be careful, man. It's a little duck, man. It's not. Although there might be ducks at the farmer's market. This was not. Oh, that's a clunker. Ha! Ah. Whoa. Big time.
I think we got something worthwhile here. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. I think so. I think I like it. I think it's good enough for this one. So we're going to um, start erasing some of the lines we don't want, all the pencil lines and such. And then we'll put this up uh, on the website. And if you want to download it and color it uh, and submit it, we'll put it in the coloring gallery. And if you want to create one of your own, make sure you sign up for our email list and we will uh, email you the blanks for these, uh, these blank pages and the list that I use uh, to select the items when I roll the dice and uh, then you can participate, be a part of that. We would love to have your entries and we'll post them on an online gallery. I don't have any entries yet uh, so you could be the first. Um, and we'll just start building a gallery full of these random quick draws that people submit, uh, which I think would be really, really creative and cool. So again, there are, 12, there are four categories. Sorry for the squeak there. Four categories with 12 options in each category. And I did the math today, thanks to Google, and uh, found out that that gives you over 20,000 options for things to draw, um, which is pretty pretty good um, we probably won't do them all and there will be repeats obviously because um, I did the vase of flowers last week um, I can't remember I can't remember what it was with the vase of flowers but you can check out last week's episode it's up on the YouTube channel um, and you can also participate with that so if you you go to mrhens.com we're gonna keep all of well I broke my eraser off hello um, we're going to keep kind of, uh, oh my goodness, I'm losing my mind. I can't think of the word. We're going to keep a record of all of the episodes, uh, with the artwork so that you could download, um, all of the coloring sheets and you can participate at any time, and, um, and draw your own. So are you an artist? Are you an up and coming artist? Are you a student? Uh, if you are, please join us and participate. Have fun. And if we get enough people into it and want to do it, uh, maybe we'll do a Zoom call together. You know, we can all draw together. Uh, we'll roll the dice, see what we get. And uh, you know, we can all have a great time laughing and uh, enjoying each other's company. Uh, I think that would be pretty cool. Mm. I'm going to grab my big... Eraser, this is my magic rub eraser. They don't pay me to say this, but I really appreciate this eraser. It does a really good job of picking up pencil. Especially if you've got a big surface. Now it does leave a lot of little pellets, so if you're not big into that, probably a gum, or, not a gum eraser, uh, a kneaded eraser is probably something that you'll like a little bit more. I like this for the big areas. It makes me kind of go at it pretty fast and cover a lot of ground pretty fast. So, especially when I'm done inking the drawing. Uh, yeah. So there. There you go, guys. Uh, in case you were wondering what a mad scientist looked like when it was tumbling down with a vase of flowers at a farmer's market, maybe now you have a better idea what that is. You know what I ought to do is I ought to give this to AI and see if AI can draw it better. Um, although I might be scared to <laughs> see the results. <laughs> There's probably an AI program out there that would just put this to shame and uh, make me not want to do it anymore. <laughs> Hopefully not. But, <clears throat> excuse me. Guys, I hope you had fun tonight. I had a great time uh, drawing this picture and uh, look forward to seeing your work soon. All right. We'll see you soon. Bye.